today driving of the first ever Cupra Telama and you need to watch this because this vehicle is very interesting. It is built together in the same plant in Hungary with the upcoming Audi Q3, the new generation. It's also a sister model technology wise to the VW Tiguan in the new generation and also Hmm, wait a minute, the size is not too different from the Cupra Formentor. So how different is it to the Cupra Formentor? Answers to all of these questions today here in this review is Thomas on how to go fuel in 4K full screen, full length. Let's go with a very fresh, sporty and modern front. It looks almost yeah, sports car alike here with these cooling, cooling holes. Yeah, and uh, you see they do collect a lot of uh, stuff. So there's always a pro and con about this, definitely. Graphane gray is this color here for today. I think it's really cool because it's not a matte color, but it looks a little bit matte-ish. There are, however, also matte colors available for this very vehicle here. Well, then the Cupra logo always has this tribal style or as you might also think of, this is the mark of Saulan. Yeah, maybe you thought of that uh, as well. Like, <laughs> then the headlamps here, you can optionally get a HD matrix LED. It's also the ones you can see here. And interesting structure also in this Triforce style. Always remember me of like Zelda, Triforce, Ganon and so on, if you uh, are familiar with the Nintendo world. And even more interesting is when you hit the turning indicators, for example, how they replace this very structure and even more interesting when you put like the welcoming and goodbye light signature when you open the vehicle or when you then later on close it again you always get a very cool light show and that appears both in the front and probably even more so spectacular in the rear so we did some cool shots there in the basement garage for you they could better see that so uh, they play a lot with light in that respect you might say oh, wait a minute where is it again built yeah in Hungary together with the Audi Q3 and you know Audi has positioned themselves so hey like we are the light brand Cupra now follows in these footsteps and also wants to do a lot with lighting technology but here I think um, it works pretty well and the HD matrix LED they can even project things on the ground for assistance systems and so on. Then wheels from 18 to 20 inch. These are the biggest 20 inch wheels. And when you have a VZ version, you can also get uh, Akebono uh, special brakes like performance brakes. You can also see them right here, pretty massive. Again, 20 inch wheels. We see how it reacts from the comfort and so on because this one here also gets the DCC Pro new dynamic chassis control that's the adaptive suspension they have introduced with the Tiguan and the Passat and this has a two valve technology so like in both ways you can um, rule them individually and that promises more comfort and sportiness at the same time does it work especially with this wheel configuration we're going to find out 18 inch it would start so if you want even more rolling comfort you will go 18 or 19 inch if you don't spec the optional dcc by the way then this vehicle here always comes standard with a sport suspension and the suspension is always 10 millimeters lower than the vw tiguan for example so clearly they want to position it sportier than the tiguan but less sporty than the formentor so that is like this niche in between interesting isn't it but yeah also in the driving part we're going to find out if Sauron will actually pick the Terra over the Tiguan today. <laughs> the length here by the way is 4 meters 52 or 178 inches and that is actually not too different from the Tiguan but also not too different from the Formentor. It's just like seven centimeters or three inches difference to the Formentor in length so you might ask yourself why are they doing that actually? It's a little bit positioned price-wise also above the Formentor than size-wise. It is also the newer platform. So this is supposed to be more upmarket, more sophisticated than the Formentor. But does that really work? We're going to find out then when testing more of the interior stuff and of course also testing the driving uh, later on. Then there's also the Seat Ateca or the Cupra Ateca, which is even a little bit more older platform. And Cupra actually says that the Ateca will at some point, you know, you know, run out and the Formentor and this one here, the Telama, they want to have them both at the same time, a little bit different target group. But yeah, we're going to find out more about that very soon. Then in the rear, once again, light strip goes through. Pretty cool here with the Sauron logo <laughs> or uh, Cupra logo. And I have to say, yeah, this light strip on the rear is actually the, the coolest thing about this vehicle. Um, yeah, 
but why not why not then you see here you have the strong diffuser style in the lower part and wait a minute is that a case for the auto fuel fake exhaust police maybe it doesn't really pretend to be an exhaust pipe but let's say it maybe pretends to be a fake exhaust <laughs> let's take it that way uh yeah tell me what what do you think about this maximum towing capacity by the way if you have a strong petrol version is 2.2 tons and this would also be the version for that because this is here the orbit drive version and means here front plus rear on demand it's a front wheel based platform if you have an all-wheel drive then on demand power is also sent to the rear wheels beep 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 because the the lights are on here in the front so let's take a look under the engine they have reduced the choice here a little bit in comparison to the tiguan so what they for example do not do is offering a diesel so there is no diesel here for the cupra terra Mar, although it is available in the plant let's take it that way this one here is the strongest petrol engine two liter tsi 265 horsepower also the vz version as cooper calls it 5.9 seconds in the acceleration figure this is the quickest one then you would also get actually like lower horsepower figure for this very engine and also the entry level engine has a 1.5 tsi either with mild hybrid 150 horsepower front wheel drive and on base on that one, the 1.5 is also the plug-in hybrid with a reasonably sized 20 kilowatt hour net battery. So this also gives you a decent pure electric range. And that one has two different horsepower output, outputs and the stronger one, 272 horsepower, is the second quickest in the lineup with 7.3 seconds in the acceleration figure. Key fob here without these stickers, just for the launch event, but yeah, high gloss black. At least you get a Cooper logo. Then door closing sounds. Really solid in the front. And the rear doesn't sound so good. So with most vehicles recently, we had it that the rear door closing sound was mostly better than the front one. Here it's the other way around. Oh, and here, you know, these like rubber lips here in the lower part of the windows. <sighs> doesn't speak for the best quality, honestly. Also doesn't look that good. So um, yeah, there we found two things that can be um, improved, definitely. Then inside of the doors. Peep, 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 because the light is on. And then here we see some structure and also somewhat soft touch here on the top of the door. That looks nice. Then we have these copper accentuations right there. And yeah, or rose gold, as Leah would call it. And also nice here with the lever integrated ambient lighting. You already see it from here. There are many features about that coming up later in the review. Oh, then, sorry, then Cupra and Revetch. Leah was already there. But I want to show here the, um, like the inside of those in the lower part. This is all hard pack, so this is not covered at all. The Tiguan had that, right? Mm -hmm. I think the Tiguan had um, fabric um, soft covers. Then steering wheel, so far no alternative to animal skin available there, but cool that we have copper accentuations once again as contra stitches. And you have the drive mode selector at the steering wheel. That's better than in the Tiguan. I like that I can easily switch the driving mode also in the steering wheel and rear buttons on the steering wheel for volume, for the cruise control and so on. Then seats, always these bucket seats integrated head restraints and then you can either get this one here the dynamica microfiber or base would be just fabric and optionally they still offer animal skin uh, if you ask me which one should you go comfort wise for um, so i mean they have a good com comfortable ergonomic actually that fits also to tall drivers 189 602 a lot of headroom left this one the one uh, the version without the panoramic roof here at this moment um I would say if you want those who stay, which stay coolest in summer, then go for the base fabric um, surface, uh, you know, in, in the middle part. Um, these are then a little bit hotter maybe in summer and the hottest would be the animal skin. Here, electric control, there we go, back and forth and also with a memory seat. But you find a good seating position and... Seat is a little bit short. Yeah, maybe the here. seat is sometimes a little bit short here in the front. Yeah, so I feel that the Tiguan seat is a little bit longer than for, for longer legs. Uh, that's the thing. But if you compare it to the Formentor, this one here feels more SUV, whereas the Formentor feels a little bit more crossover-ish. And then steering wheel moves up and down, in and out. And you see here all the stall columns move 
together with that here for the indicators and the wipers and the right side is then here for the gear selection like in the VW electric models reverse and drive like that I love but that. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah Leah actually uh, really likes that um, also from the ID3 or something like that so um, it's actually everything is fairly easy and straightforward to control here cockpit overview really very prominent is 13 inch screen also always in that size here soon details to that then the dashboard here is also somewhat like a little bit light colored i would say like not plain black also with the structure then here also interesting structure you can also hear that and it is a very busy design definitely here probably dampened as well with another like huh why are you supposed to put in there? I'm not sure. Sunglasses? Yeah, but then sunglasses fly around there. So um, if you have any ideas t what you could put there, uh, maybe not t-shirts, I don't know. <laughs> Here, once again, these very nice air vents. Oh, listen to that. Ah, clicking sounds from the air vents on and off. So it's beautifully done. But you see that in comparison to the Tiguan, this uses so many more different elements in design. Look at that. Different color, different color, different color, different color, uh, different material, another material, another material, another material. So, uh, so many uh, color choices and material choices, even if it's just different nuances. So, yeah, as I said, the design is busy. It's more screaming out. It is more like, hey, we want to be young, fresh, not that settled like in the Tiguan. And that's a matter of preference, what you actually uh, prefer. So, to me, it's sometimes maybe a little bit too much. But then again, I found like the, for example, the, the copper um, elements here. This is uh, actually quite cool, I feel. Then also here, soft touch for your elbow. This is soft enough. Then you have a lot of space underneath, actually. And also a 12 volt power supply. Adaptive cup holders here in the front. And then we have an inductive charging pad, which is also cooled. Um, but you see the material easily looks pretty used um, actually to use bc chargers here as well and also if you want to deactivate the electronic stability control there's a very um like you know easily accessible button although of course when driving on the road it doesn't need to be that accessible honestly by the way here with 189 six for two there's still some headroom left um so no problem in the front this however here the one without the panoramic roof there is also a version available with panoramic roof and been lighting in the dark Really spectacular goes all the way around the cockpit and even inside of the doors here shines through and when I activate the hazard lights look at that now Ooh, there we go also use the ambient lighting yeah we might remember that from BMWs recently and even here this shining through effect here also applies to the hazard lights so that's pretty cool then we have even more things so Wait it, wait for it here. The mode button. So here at this moment, I have set the ambient lighting connected to the driving modes. So when I go to performance, already changes right here, goes to red, and the Cupra mode has also like the like orangish color. And here also special when I now hit the RPM with the throttle, even when stationary. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> rom rom. What do you think of that feature here? Driver POV, once again, the steering wheel with the easy controls here, left and right. So we could also change, for example, the views here in the infotainment system. And yeah, that's everything easy and visible. I like the big RPM meter, definitely that view. And you can also get this head up display. Then the central infotainment system, as for the climate unit, you have to go here, left and right, swipers for the AC unit, everything else you control here in the screen. Yeah, at least you have these swipers and don't have to do it directly in the screen, um, but there are better uh, physical solutions you have maybe seen or survey also lately. And then you have this main menu, it's a good overview. They have now put a better hardware CPU behind that one if you compare it to other of the vehicles. So that's actually more or less fine and interesting is always of course that you here can switch the driving modes but you can also do it from the steering wheel so here you can switch it through like this by the way if you're in the comfort mode and then press and hold the cooper button then you see it directly hops to the cooper mode and this is the 
carpet integration like that looks quite cool we did have some issues here today when sometimes when we switch from the main infotainment then back to carplay again sometimes it was like a black screen and uh, we had to do it again so there are still some minor software issues here and there and leah's inside handles check can she hold tight when thomas is driving like crazy again Yes, it's possible, so no cost savings there, also properly dampened, and even in the rear. So uh, we have both rear and the front handles, so no matter where you sit, you're safe from Thomas Crazy driving. <laughs> then rear seats on the top part, there's hard plastic, however, it is structured here. Yeah. My hair? Yeah, yeah but it's, Thomas. It's like uh, all the girls always say they like curly Thomas. But then the guys say like, ah, Curly Thomas looks like too wild. Please fix your hair. You need a haircut and so on. It's, it's interesting how it's like split, you know, but yeah, vote for or against <laughs> Curly Thomas in the comments, uh, please. Now, most important topic for today, definitely. But I would like to know from Leah now, does the copper accentuation or as she would call it, rose gold fit to the new Apple Watch? Maybe a little Maybe bit. Maybe a little bit. A little bit, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm smelling this could be her car, but um, <laughs> I'm still skeptical. So uh, there needs to be more convincing from the car to convince me, right? <laughs> then let's take a look here at the comfort and so on. Um, so you see, it's not too much space for my legs, actually. There is this recess here at the back part of the seat. So this does fit, but only with a recess because these seats here, these integrated sports seats, integrated head restraint sports seats are very really voluminous. They take away knee room, maybe more space than in the former tour, but not plenty for when you are driving the tall driver. And then here, headroom with 189, 602. This is actually no problem. So there's a lot of headroom left. Then also good quality materials here at the back of the microfiber and the high red leather red. That's fine. Isofix on the outside seats. Here we can also move that bench. We are soon also going to show you how that affects the trunk because you get more trunk length and volume by that. Or of course fold it then here with these straps. And the thing is um, these mechanism that it like gets fixed in here might be good on the one hand and practical on the other hand and of course and you might have experienced a similar situation mm -hmm. we also had it and when someone puts it down and then the other one doesn't really know about that fixation and comes out ah, okay i'll fold it up again and <laughs> okay yeah that happened to you know a lot of a uh, lot, lot of times by, uh, for us while shooting so you then have to unleash it here again or unlock it isengard unleashed so in here there we go yeah and then it's fixed again on the upright position here. Adaptive cup holders, that's really nice here in the middle console. So there you see also this little bit step up more of sophistication than with the Formentor. And here, this and the ski hatch, you fold down. But overall, I mean, it's cozy here, minus then the leg room that could be a little bit longer. Oh, nice, by the way, here also uh, these like copper accentuations at the vents. And also, oh, they have clicking sounds when you put them left to right, that's opening and closing them actually, and two USB-C chargers. Let's check out the trunk or the boot, opening it here from below. 530 liter in the standard setup. Then here the cabin trolley fits also in vertically, no problem. It's a meter of 40 inches in width, and the normal length here is about 88 centimeters or 35 inches. See here, I already folded two-thirds. There's also ski hatch folding available and the total length here is 170 in meter or 67 inches. Underneath here, I can also lift that one. The plug-in hybrid would have a little bit less in the liter setup. Here is also with a subwoofer. Replacement tire would also theoretically be possible. And if you read different liter figures out there, the reason for that is it varies depending on the rear bench. So when I put a a little bit more forward like this here then you have more trunk length here and then also this boot volume number is a little bit higher to fold the seats by the way um, that's why i did it before folding from here it's not really possible you have to go around then and do it and from the rear to fold them here Cupra mode. so a good acceleration here from stand still and 5.9 seconds is the official figure. I'm going to check the time codes if this one was actually correct. This one here driving the 265 horsepower version of the 2 liter TSI. So this is a top horsepower version, also the most, well, most powerful one, not in the horsepower sense, but in the acceleration sense, because the other one would then be the 272 horsepower plug-in hybrid. But this one here, of course, always has the 
best acceleration figure because it is way lighter than the plug-in hybrid and always has the power no matter in what situation it is not dependent on yeah, how the status of the battery actually is. So essentially this is here also a new Tiguan technology wise or a upcoming Audi Q3 and you feel that in some aspects we've also mentioned in the interior part like here the shifting lever and so on but since the design is so different on the interior then again it says like yeah maybe it's it is something different but driving wise it's definitely very interesting to, to find out some of the differences so what i've done here is um, they use the same technology yes but try to make the car a little bit sportier and it's probably also one of the reasons they don't offer a diesel version here here in the Cupra mode, we also have the DCC Pro, a little bit stiffer. So it's still, since it's like this adaptive suspension with the new two-valve system, this is also new to this generation here. Also, if you compare like a new Tiguan to the previous generation Tiguan, this new DCC Pro has a wider span between comfort and sport here. So although we are in the sports mode here, the suspension is doing also a good job as for the comfort. So sometimes when we have adaptive suspensions, you might say, hey, I want to just switch the mode very quickly again because maybe a sport mode is uncomfortable or something like that. But here it's actually totally fine. So I could drive all day actually also in the comfort mode and do some lane change here, left to right. It's really nice. So it drives very well. It feels really small. It feels compact. and it feels a little bit more agile than the Tiguan and that is probably due to the suspension setup or Leah, what would you say? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, would you agree? I agree. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's really good to, to ask her because, um, I mean, sometimes we, I say like, mm, wind noise is like this and she's like, nah, that's really loud, you know, so it's good when we both agree that that's actually always good, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on everything, almost everything. Um, yeah, but indeed it feels a little bit more agile, that's also what they wanted to achieve, so Although it's not really smaller, it feels a little bit smaller than the Tiguan does. And it's cool that I can also switch through the driving modes here from the steering wheel. I love that. So we're here in the Cupra mode. And then the only thing that a little bit maybe irritates me, but you can argue pro and con here. It doesn't change here. So it only shows me a small symbol then in the, in the instrument stand in the front, which driving mode I'm actually in. Now I'm going back to the normal comfort mode. If you want to follow that, you would have to, you know, click here on the button itself and go for the, uh, yeah, and that's the thing, you know, doing that, that drive profile, though. so there we are. And then I can see, like, which mode I'm actually in. But you can also remember these pictograms, which stands for which mode, and then um, go back to that one again. So here in the comfort mode, it gives me a little bit more floating comfort from suspension so suspension is definitely already one of the most favorite things here about this vehicle i can already tell you uh, tell you that this new dc pro is really good there were also some comments and questions like does that one create a special humming noise in the vehicle and so far we have not experienced that so also here at one kilometers an hour 60 miles an hour on the motorway I don't feel that this car would be any noisy from suspension, from bumps or something like that. Maybe we can test it later again, where we have some bumps in the road or something, but here on the motorway, it's actually nice and silent, so it feels like a good motorway vehicle, actually from the suspension characteristics, also from the noise insulation and so on. The steering is also pretty cool because it's really direct. The progressive steering is also standard for this vehicle, so you don't have to go for that one optional. What does progressive steering mean? It means that you don't have to steer too much to actually do the same thing you want to achieve. So when I'm here doing the lane change, you see fine commands are transported and then it goes a little bit more progressive to the outside, mean when I'm doing some steering to the outside, it increases like what the wheels are doing. So you don't have to like steer it all the way around just to do one corner or something like that. And it's working very well. But here also in the comfort mode, that's again this DCC Pro. Um, what is that? What the? Huh? She was like wildly gesturing and shouting with the window down for something like, I don't know, interesting. Yeah. Welcome to Spain, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, our Spanish friends also uh, also uh, mention that uh, quite quite often to us that this is um, actually something 
pretty normal, I've, I've heard. Well, in Germany, uh, like the language of abuse on the motorway is rather like, you know, driving so close to one each other, not talking, but just showing with the vehicle, with the force, of course, very dangerous that you are like the strongest on the road. But of course, all aggression on the road is um, pretty useless. Yeah, can't say that I'm totally immune to that when I'm being provoked, but you always have to try to like calm yourself, like, no, this is not the place where you should uh, carry out your fights, definitely. Dia says like, yeah, okay, and last time you had the eight cylinder and then accelerated all the way through to 200 to revenge yourself. Yeah, sorry, guilty for that. <laughs> Sometimes I try to use the quick cars also to show um, that I'm not getting bullied on the road, you know, so, but yeah. Always, of course, in the, in the safe manner. But this car really tempts you also to drive sporty, but without being too exaggerated. And there's the big question about the Cupra Formentor, because the size difference is not too large and yeah you can really raise the question like why do they put two cars out there that are really really similar this one here is on a newer platform together with like with the all new BWT gun so this one for example gets the DCC Pro has a little bit more space a little bit larger and so on so this one here is let's say the higher positioned vehicle but I have to say I do feel the comfort difference from the suspension so yes this suspension here does feel more sophisticated. Yeah, you feel that it's more upmarket, but it's not like that would say, hey, that's why I would pay double the price uh, for, for the Terramar than for the Formentor. So the thing is that sometimes they give very good leasing rates, like in the recent years, to the Formentor. So you can still go for the Formentor if you have a very, very great deal. And if this one would be like super, super expensive or something like that. And 120 kilometers on the motorway here in Spain, 70, kilo, 70 miles an hour, so that's approximately like that, and still really smooth and also silent. It's extremely windy outside today here, especially on that motorway here. There was like a wind indicator next to the road, it was going crazy, but super relaxing. So this can indeed do both. So the performance, by the same time, also that relaxing part. And I really have to say, when we started, uh, our journey here today, I was thinking, yeah, there's a difference here. There's like this wind indicator. <laughs> there is a difference. Of, actually, what was the like a electric windmill to power the? So, I don't know. Maybe our guys from Barcelona can can enlighten uh, us on that. So I, I first thought that the difference between the Formentor and the Terramar is is there, but maybe not the largest ones. But the more you drive this vehicle here, you the more you really feel that there is a very notable difference. This one here is more sophisticated, it's more silent. It drives just better, especially with the CC Pro. So yes, a higher price here for the Terra Mar is definitely justified, not only because it's a little bit larger, but also it is the more like higher positioned, positioned vehicle. Um, it really feels premium in driving, got to say that. And uh, for the Formentor, it's more that, hey, you get maybe like a good deal, a good price for a very decent vehicle and it drives well and so on. But this one really tops the Formentor. So you can understand that they uh, not only want to cannibalize the existing target group, but they want yeah, probably cannibalize the Tiguan. <laughs> not sure if the VW guys will like that. Uh, but of course, also from, um, you know, outside um, the VW Corporation, because what we recently heard, uh, like um, like an old friend of mine, um, he actually said like, ah, I always used to drive BMWs, now the prices are just insane and now I drive Cupra, you know, so um, that might be a thing if you want to drive something fancier, but at the same time you don't want to pay Audi, BMW, Mercedes prices. It's not that the price would be low for this one, but still if you get a good leasing deal, it's probably in most cases then, yeah, still cheaper than Audi, BMW, Mercedes, you know, because their prices are meanwhile gone through the roof so this might also be something and yeah here once again even at some, some higher speeds in the motorway you can easily enjoy that of course if you guys fancy we can of course at some point repeat uh, that test here with really really high speeds on the German Autobahn deactivating this speed warning while driving by the way is possible this new EU law so either um, you're here in the vehicle menu and driver alerts speed warning here on and off or you can also press a button here at the steering wheel and then scroll with your right thumb and go to speed warning, then it's also deactivated. So they found two ways which are 
not too complicated to do. So uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Then we also have, of course, an adaptive cruise control here. Um, we have also installed the most sophisticated setting. You can also do yeah, that with the left thumb to set. And the distance to the car in front of us is being kept. And we can also, for example, increase or do decrease the distance and also with the same button here I can and then uh, decide if it's just a normal ACC speed limiter or if I go to the travel assist like with the VWs and then with the travel assist it also does here the keeping in the lane I'm supposed to keep the hands at the steering wheel now when we go to the tunnel we can also see some of the ambient lighting that goes away around here like a like a river hoop you call it with a, with a boat with a yard for example and here you can also see a little bit stuck in the traffic jam here that the steering does just slide and smooth commands and that's also thing when you have this new platform all the other technology stuff besides the you know, hardware suspension is all more sophisticated so here also the assistance systems are more sophisticated you can see here it takes a slight bend and it's also keeping it centered in a lane uh, although i'm now moving over to the right a little bit to make space for a suicide motor motorcyclist <laughs> um, yeah, but you see here, very smooth also as for the assistance system. Blind spot monitor, there we go. So it's integrated actually here in this ambient lighting. Nice. There we can see, yeah, this is pretty cool actually. It's slight integration, no, maybe not as visible uh, when it would be in the side uh, mirror there, but it's actually a cool idea, definitely. And some agile driving now here. Okay, this is in the Cooper mode, mode the sound actuation. I don't know, um, I'm not sure how much you hear from that on the camera, but... Oh, ah, honestly, doesn't sound so good. In the Cooper mode, it's always on. You, you can go to an individual mode and then uh, like set everything to sporty, but deactivate the sound emulation. That wouldn't be possible, but in the Cooper mode, it is on. It's also like, I don't know, it, it, it sounds really artificial. So actually, I'm not a fan of that one. Um, in the performance mode, you still have performance, but see here, the, the sound emulation is not as strong. Yeah, I would say this is maybe not the best thing. However, the handling itself is actually pretty decent. So here, DCC in that sport mode is a little bit stiffer. At the same time, it's not getting rough or something. Steering feel. It's really nice, so you don't have to steer too much with that progressive steering. And the car actually also does exactly what you expect from it. And um, here also, once again, you feel the difference between the Formentor and the Telema. So here I'm way more relaxed in these winding corners. And when you may remember, we were driving Agile in the Formentor and that was way more engaging. So for a driver, actually more fun for you. Yeah, it's better, yeah. So, the Tour was more fun for me to drive as a driver because it was like sportier, more engaging. This one here more relaxed and more comfort. So... And better for the passenger. <laughs> so you feel this is better for the passenger yeah. here? Uh, because sometimes we have cars that are a little bit sportier and then it's sometimes better for the passenger because you don't get like this motion sickness or something, but here you, do you feel better here or in the moment or yeah. here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's uh, that's the comfort thing then from the suspension and so on. But definitely, if you want a more driver-focused car and more sporty driving fun, then you would stick with the Formentor. And if you want more comfort and also more comfort for your passengers, then you would go here with the Terra And fuel economy is not too good, honestly. So when we did more like cruise control, motorway, 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, we were a little bit less than eight liters on one kilometers. So about 30 MPG US, 35 MPG UK. However, if you also take into account, you know, some acceleration or some city traffic, it even jumped to about 10 liters on one kilometers. So that is then rather like 23 MPG US or 28 MPG UK. Pricing starts from 43,000 euros. So I already have the German example prices and up to, yeah, a little bit more over 60,000 euros if you go strongest engine, 
highest trim, extras, wheels, performance brakes and so on as it stands here right now. And then of course it's not like a cheap offer at all. And also the price difference to the Formentor is, when you compare the base versions, at least 3,000 euros. But then if you compare top trim would be like 55 to like 63. So then the price difference can be from three to 8,000 euros Formentor to the Terra Mar. So you see it's positioned higher also pricing wise. And yeah, it kind of works. It is a more sophisticated vehicle, but it's also, let's say, less a driver's vehicle so it is fun to drive it is a little bit stiffer in the setup than the tiguan also a little bit sporty oriented from the setup 10 me 10 millimeters lower but then again the form and tour is more engaging to drive sportier this one here brings more comfort especially with the new dcc pro more sophistication in the suspension also less loud so more silent on the motorway at higher speeds this one gives you more a relaxed suv feeling whereas the form and tour gives you more the modern sporty crossover touch than at a lower price and yeah cupra has been like firing out these cupra uh, form and tours at really good leasing ratios i'm really looking forward how they will position this one here in the leasing wise but definitely the way we make it more expensive than, than the um, form and tour obviously sometimes the naming can be a little bit confusing but i hope uh, that we could bring you a little bit like closer to understanding what is the different positioning of the car clear is that you can take this one also as a very good tiguan replacement if you think yeah i like the tiguan concept space wise and so on but I want it a little bit more spiced up. And then you can also go for the Sauron Telama or Cupra Telama. <laughs> now, check in with the Formator review and, of course, the direct brother, the Tiguan.